Welcome to Late Night with Gummy Black. Didn't see you come in. This is Coffee Black. I'm here with my two white associates. Scott Fancy and Jason Gay. Today we're going to be talking about biomagnification and bioaccumulation. Scott is a professor at University of Alberta and he's going to be helping us out today. So, Scott, for all the listeners at home, please explain to us in chemistry terminology what biomagnification is. Well, Coffee Black. Biomagnification occurs when a substance's concentration increases the food chain as a result of a process called bioaccumulation. Tissue concentrations of a contaminant such as DDT, mercury, arsenic, toxine, etc. increase at, at each, trophic each trophic level in a food web where there is efficient uptake and slow elimination. This continuous effect has the most harm on the top of the food chain, and unfortunately this happens to be us, humans. Go. So Scott, you, use some examples to explain biomagnification. Well, for instance, a small fish eats a lot of plankton in its life. A larger fish eats a lot of these smaller fish over a lifetime, accumulating the mercury in each of those little fish. If a toxin causes a fish growing problems, the bigger fish has to eat more of these little fish to stay alive, making the problems worse. Another example shows a, to shows a toxin's concentration grow from 0.10 parts per trillion to 4,800,000 parts per trillion in six levels of, of food chain. Wow. So, explain why biomagnification poses such a big threat to the human population, and not just to the human population, but the population of animals all over the world. Well, similar to what I stated earlier, humans are at the top of the food chain. And we see the heaviest effects of biomagnification. This causes a huge problem because even the smallest concentrations of toxins can build up to high enough doses that can cause great amount of harm. Pollutants are not always dangerous. This is when a pollutant is, is not mobile, so it is unlikely to be picked up by organisms. Soluble in water, it can be easily excreted. However, if the pollutants dissolve in the fats and tissue, it will be retained for a longer time. This is how toxins are passed from a mother to her offspring. The milk produced by females contain a lot of fat that could potentially be containing toxins and ultimately harm the baby. Although we see pollution as an issue that does not affect our cells, the chain it has to go through before reaching us makes the problem worse. Go. Um, support your second answer, I guess, um, with the Minamata disease. Uh, like the cause of the disease, the effects on the human population, and ways that this can be prevented. Well, the disease minimized is a great example of how biomagnification affects people. It is, neuro not, it is a neurological syndrome that is caused by severe mercury poisoning. It was first discovered in 1956 and was caused by the release of methyl, methyl mercury in industry water. Um, this highly toxic chemical bioaccumulated in fish, which is eaten by the local pop population, resulted in mercury, mercury poisoning. Symptoms of minimata include ataxia, numbness in the hands and feet, general muscle weakness, narrowing of the field of vision, and damage to hearing and speech. If the case is severe, insanity, paralysis, coma, and death will follow within weeks of onset of the symptoms. The most probable way to prevent the spread of this disease would be simply to prevent pollution since it is the foundation. Without pollution, there is no minimum. Thank you, Scott. Well, I'm Scott Fraser, professor of chemistry at University of Alberta. And now joining us will be Jason Garrett. Jason, will you come on up here? Thank you for having me, Kea. No problem. Shh. In the cave, in the... Hey folks, we're back in the air. This is Godly Black, keeping it real foggy. And my guest here now is Professor Jason Garrett. He's a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. Now Jason, to reiterate what Scott said, uh, could you please provide at least two examples of biomagnification and how it can affect the population negatively and positively? Sure could. 
So, say a farmer sprays his field with DDT or some type of insect repellent on a crop. The extra runoff finds its way into streams and rivers all around, and the chemical travels down these rivers and streams into the oceans. When it gets to the oceans, it affects small marine animals that are then eaten by larger ones, and then in turn, eaten by us. So eventually, the chemical builds up and ends up in our bodies. And we're back live with Late Night with Coffee Black. Hey folks, this is Coffee Black. One coffee, two creams. Now Jason, could you please explain to the viewers the Responsible Care Program developed by the Canadian Chemical Producers Association and how it has helped uh, alleviate some of, the, some of the concern about toxic, toxic chemicals in the environment? Yes, they have done a lot. The Responsible Care Program covers all aspects of the company's business, including environmental protection, resource con conservation, occupational health, and safety. Safety pro er, process safety, research and development, transportation, pretty much the whole thing. As well as in the governments at all levels, to advance the laws and regulations in support of sustainability. The program tells companies what they can and cannot do in regards to the chemical waste, where they can dump it, and where they can't. And we're back live with Coffee Black, kicking it after hours in the Jazz Lounge. And we're back with Coffee Black. And we got a caller in the line. Caller, what's your name? This is Chris! Chris, where are you from? Alabama! Chris, who's your question directed to? That phaser! Why is he on the TV? Oh, sorry, Jim, could we just get him off? Thanks. Oh, we got another caller. Caller, what's your name? Hi, this is Susan. Susan, who's your question for? Um, Professor Garrett. Alright. Go ahead, Susan. Um, Professor Garrett, I was wondering if you could find another initiative that has helped to either prevent or fix biomagnification problems. Well, Susan, the Environmental Protection Agency is another example of a program that helps to stop or decrease biomagnification. It does this by controlling what companies can and cannot dump or waste, and it helps them control their chemical waste. Thank you so much, Professor Garrett. You're so good looking. I love you. Anytime. Oh. Anytime. All right, baby. Thank you. <laughs> 